Greetings, this is Dyslexi from the Army Community Group, Shack Tactical. In cooperation with Bohemia Interactive, I'm creating a series of videos to explain some of the basics of Armor 3. In this video, we'll be covering a number of tips about how to operate effectively as an infantryman, to include situational awareness, positioning, dealing with contact, and how to put effective fire on the enemy. We'll start with the most fundamental aspect of survival, which is that of situational awareness. This simply means staying aware of your surroundings, knowing how to scan for threats, and maintaining a high level of awareness all around you, even when things are becoming chaotic. One feature of the Arma series that sets itself apart from others is the ability to look around independent of where you're aiming. This can be controlled in two basic ways. The first is by holding your Alt key, which enables this free look mode, and the second method is using a head tracking device like the Track IR to allow you to look around while still retaining aiming control. Whatever method you use, try to keep your head on a swivel. Threats can come unexpectedly from all directions, and when you move, you need to be looking around so that you can react to danger with the shortest possible delay and the greatest understanding of the tackle situation and the movement possibilities that are available to you. Take a look at this scene. What do you see? What should you be looking for first? Think of it from the perspective of cover and concealment. Cover being an object that can stop common types of enemy fire like rifles and machine guns, while concealment is simply something that makes it hard or impossible to be spotted. The enemy will occupy positions that give them a tactical advantage. They'll gravitate towards cover first and concealment second. Scan these sorts of features first. Stone walls, buildings, tree trunks, and so forth. Look for signs of movement, however small. Sometimes the enemy will be easy to spot, particularly if they're caught unaware, such as when crossing open terrain or skylining on a hill. Other times, they'll be prepared for you, stationary, and good cover and concealment. You'll really have to work to spot them. Now, as to moving in this kind of hostile environment, first of all, plan your routes carefully. Avoid moving for prolonged periods in open terrain, and always be looking around so you know where you can take cover if you suddenly take contact. If you do need to move across open terrain, do so with an element of friendly forces covering you as you move. You move up, find a good position, and then you cover for them as they move up. Repeat this as needed to cross large patches of open terrain. This is known as bounding overwatch. Think of it like walking carefully on a slippery surface where you always want to keep one foot on the ground to preserve your balance. In this case, that's one element of soldiers covering while the other element or elements move. It helps to prevent you from figuratively busting your face from haste. Remember that movement draws the eye and attracts attention. Moving slowly or taking a lower posture can help to make you harder to spot. Be aware of the environment you're moving in to ensure you don't accidentally skyline yourself or place yourself into a highly contrasting situation. When there's no cover or concealment to be found, get low. At the very least, you'll be a harder target to hit. Now, none of us really came to Stratus to go on peaceful nature walks. You're going to take enemy contact at some point, and what you do in those first seconds is crucial. What you did prior to that point, your movement techniques, and the tactical decisions you made, those set the stage for what you're able to do once the bullets start flying. Make sure you move and make decisions that help to put the odds as high in your favor as possible. Contact happens in two basic forms. Either a soft contact, which is where you see the enemy without them seeing you, or a hard contact, where fire is being exchanged or received. Soft contacts are easy. If you see the enemy before they notice you, make a hasty assessment as to what you'll do about it. If you want to fight, find good ground nearby. It gives you better concealment or cover and has an advantage over the enemy, and use that to ambush them. If you're too small of an element to win a fight, simply use the opportunity to move unseen away from the enemy. Pick your battles and put the odds in your favor whenever possible. The tougher situation is that of hard contacts, where you weren't necessarily expecting a fight. If you suddenly take fire, your priority is to improve your position. The enemy tends to wait until you're vulnerable before shooting at you. Where you're standing when you take fire is a kill zone, you don't want to stay there. Move for nearby cover concealment, and make sure your teammates are doing the same. If able, fire a few hasty shots in the general direction of the enemy, even if you're not quite sure where exactly that is. The fire you're receiving is stressful and disruptive. If you can return the favor to the enemy and make them think they might get hit as well, you'll improve your situation. Once you're in a better position, try to narrow down where the enemy fire is coming from. Look for muzzle flashes and smoke, or if the enemy is using tracers, follow them back to their points of origin. Use a stance adjust feature to expose as little of yourself as possible to enemy fire. And once you've identified their positions, shoot them. Have your buddies shoot them. Things become rather complicated at this point. 
I've written about this in my tackle guide in a section called the evolution of a firefight. I'd recommend reading that if you want more detail. The short version is that when the fighting starts, return fire as you move, find better cover, and once you're settled, begin refining your knowledge of the enemy situation and engage them as best as possible while you or your team leaders determine the next course of action. Now, as to shooting, there are several factors to accuracy. The primary ones are stance, movement, fatigue, and wounds. If you're tired or hurt, your weapon sights will not be as stable. If you're standing, you'll have a higher amount of sight sway than if you were crouched or prone. It's the same with movement. You'll have a harder time being accurate if you're moving while shooting. The further away the enemy is, the more important it is to be low to the ground and in a stable stance. Keep in mind that you can also use the hold breath feature to give yourself an extra bit of aiming precision for a short period of time. Your bullets will drop over range. Each weapon is zeroed to a specific range, and some have adjustable sights. You can see the zeroed range in the upper right of the HUD. If the target is closer than that, your bullets will strike slightly high, and if it's further, the bullet will fall below your point of aim. Look for puffs of dirt and dust to help you adjust your aim as you fire, and adjust your sights if needed to be more accurate. Keep in mind that every shot doesn't need to be at a perfectly visible enemy. If you can't directly see the enemy, but you know roughly where they are, shoot at positions that look like they'd be good positions for the enemy to take. If you see a patch of bushes and know there's enemy fire coming from that area, but you're unable to spot the shooter, put some rounds into the bushes. It's entirely possible you'll be able to hit someone you couldn't see, simply by paying attention and thinking through the situation from their perspective. Be liberal with your fire. This is not to say that you should just blow through magazine after magazine firing wildly from the hip while screaming, but rather that you shouldn't be too stingy with your ammo, when it's a literal difference between your virtual life and death. We're infantry after all, not snipers. Our rifles have 30 round magazines so that we can put more fire out and thus have a greater chance of hitting things, not so that we can make 30 single shot kills. If you're a machine gunner, even better. Those lengthy belts or high capacity magazines are designed for suppressing and killing the enemy with high volumes of fire. You've got plenty of ammo, spread it around, make sure every enemy gets their fair share. Now, when you can see the enemy clearly, take your time and make more precise shots. When you can't, make up for this lack of knowledge of their precise position with extra bullet volume, so to speak. Whatever happens, make sure you maintain your situational awareness and avoid tunnel vision. Just because you're taking fire from a given position doesn't mean that there aren't other enemy elements trying to flank you. For every enemy you can actually see, assume there are at least three others you don't see and try to anticipate how they'll attack or flank you, and do your best to cover those avenues. Alright, that wraps up this community guide. Hopefully you'll be able to apply some of the concepts we talked about towards your combat experiences on Stratus. Good luck and good hunting. For more community guide videos, be sure to subscribe to the official Arma 3 YouTube channel. For other Arma 3 updates, keep track of the official website, Facebook, and Twitter pages. If you'd like more in-depth tutorial and large-scale multiplayer gameplay of Arma 3 and the previous Arma games, I'd also recommend you check out my personal channel here. This is Dyslexi, and I'll see you on Stratus.